Um, all right, just a few things. Obviously, we uh, made a transaction yesterday, you know, trading uh, a pick swap 25 for Van Jefferson. Excited to chance to work with Van, and uh, you know, he'll be out there today. So, and then I've, unfortunately, you got to make corresponding moves. Um, Andre Smith, you know, made a move, move there, but he's back on our practice squad, which I'm glad we uh, love Andre in our program. So and then we also brought Keelan Harris back. So those corresponding moves would have been Zay Malone and CJ Saunders. All right, Coach. Um, uh, what intrigued you all about uh, Van to uh, bring him in? At, um, you know, maybe get him up to speed and then get sure. him hop out yeah. and get him up to speed. And then... Yeah, he'll just see how the week goes. But, yeah, um, you know, a player that I've said I know a lot about. You know, Van worked with his father, Sean. Sean also played here. Um, knew Van, watched him play in high school and, and national area. At, uh, as he was going out, he was a big recruit, you know, coming up there. Uh, I think Sean enjoyed being the uh, recruiting dad. It's a shame that when NIL wasn't going on there for Sean. But uh, Van was a, was a great player in that area. Obviously went down to Ole Miss and went to Florida, had a really good career. Rams drafted in the second round. Had some uh, had some really productive moments in the NFL. Obviously, a couple of years ago in the Super Bowl. But a lot of times you're looking things, you know, circumstances change. Uh, the Rams are an organization we have a lot of respect for. Good working relationship. I think it's pretty easy. Terry and, and Les need, and you know that's kind of the way the league is now. When you got good working relationships, no different than the deal with with Detroit. You know, there's some teams that are. It's comical. Other teams that are good working relationship, and we appreciate the Rams. And a lot of times, it's circumstances change, and guys can have a change of scenery and get a chance to add uh, add to a certain group and see how it works out. So, uh, you know, so we're excited to have Van, and we'll see where it goes. During that time you were working with Sean, what what did you learn about Van? Well, I mean, it was a while ago, and it's not why we, but you, but you do you do feel good, you know what what he's about, and. Uh, you know, obviously the tape matches it too. It's not just a personal relationship, but you feel good about bringing him in our locker room. Um, you know, with a lot of characteristics and a lot of times, like you said, circumstances change year to year in the league and a lot of times you get guys in different places and hopefully it works out and you try to get a win-win. You know, something that helps the Rams, helps us, and ultimately helps Van and his team. So, um, like I said, I, I know knew him as a, as a, watched him as a young player and uh, I know this, he's faster than his dad. He's a smarter and better looking too. So, thanks to his mother. You think of skill position players as maybe in, in, in a week's time, maybe having a package or two? Um, can you we'll see, see it happening that quickly that he could we'll see? Other than the kicking position, is, is that wide receiver position the easiest position to learn and do offense in a short time? Is there something? It depends on the scheme and what you want to ask the player to do. I mean, <clears throat> like I said, I've been on a short week before and. You sign a guy on Monday, and you got to play him Thursday night, 45 snaps, done it with tight end, done it with backup quarterbacks, and it's just the way it goes sometimes. So it just depends what you want to ask him and to do and, again, how they fit in the puzzle together, you know, how effective you think somebody can be, where they fit, you know, what, what, what you need on special teams, packages you may carry on defense. I mean, there's a lot that goes into it before you make that decision on Saturday. Why did you want to go about adding a player like him? Was there a, a kind of a profile? Um... Not necessarily. I mean, it's just you have those conversations all the time. I think the league is very transactional, and any time, just like when you work guys out, you get a chance to upgrade, and yeah, and it's what you, you know, the deals you want to do, and and, and where you're trying to, like I said, it was a, it's a pick swap and a chance for a guy for a change of scenery that's been a good player that we feel like could fit, but we'll have to see. You know, man, a lot. Goes both ways, right? You give them an opportunity, that's all you can promise. There had been reports that the Rams might be looking for some kind of deal with Cooper Cup coming back and they had a they had a surplus. Did you see did you guys see that as an opening to No. There's usually when that's happened, that usually means that it's those old discussions have probably already happened. Those are the shell games there. Those don't come out of left field and you make the call after you read that. It's just the way it is. When you take a look at Washington, um, 
what stands out the most? What's got maybe the difference between their start and where they've been gone through the last couple of years? Yeah, it's, you know, like a lot of things and how the games go, you know, early sometimes, you know, the turnovers and you know, the way that the starts, I know this, they've started, and when they've been on the road, they've started pretty fast moving the ball offensively. Um, I think Sam Howell's done a good job in there. You know, you know what the numbers are. He's tougher than hell. I think he's very accurate. Um, and he'll sit in there. And, they, and you got to respect that. And uh, they got really good skill position players on offense. A lot of guys that can catch and run. They got vertical speed. It's a deep skill position group, especially at the wideouts. They got two good backs Gibson, Robinson, veteran O line. Um, but yeah, we, I mean, this, this will be a good challenge for us. I mean, the way they pass the football and trying to cover Dotson, McLaren, Samuel, Tommy Brown, I mean, Pringle, the, the, you know, Thomas, they, they got they got a good group. It's a good group of skill guys. They're deep. Um, and then defensively, you know, their front four, right? They've invested heavily into them. Four first round picks, doubled down on two of them. Payne, Allen, we've seen this group before. Young's back out there. Sweat, a local guy, right? Playing really well. Two linebackers, I think, are hard chargers. Davis and Barton. Secondary, right? I think. Curl is as good as a cover safety in the league that nobody talks about. Fuller's instinctive. I can go on and on and on. So, um, Forbes, right, the young rookie they drafted, competitive. Um, so that we're going to get their best shot. I know. I know Ron Rivera. They'll have this group ready to go. They've had, you know, damn near a buy to get ready. We'll get their best shot, and we're ready to go. Coach, what would be some of the keys to keep the passing attack uh, viable? What's that okay. for us? You know, yeah. obviously we're going to have to keep their passing attack in check, and we'll, we'll have to keep ours, you know, balanced. And you know the way the game is going, right? And so, yeah, it's it, absolutely. You know, you want to build off it. We want to correct the things that didn't go well last week, and that's the name of the game. There'll be different challenges. You know, they'll have different cover schemes they'll throw at us. They'll, and that's the game you play. We just need to be effective and be able to move the football, get not get one dimensional, and hopefully get in a rhythm. After week one, about some of the route running, have you made progress there? There's, there's something every week you work on, Josh. I mean, it's a results business. So, again, if you're prisoner of the moment, and like I told you after the game on Sunday, like, yeah, that's you're pleased with the progress, but it's it's ongoing. So I, I would, I would, yeah, I mean, not to be sarcastic, but I thought it was pretty good Sunday. Does that mean it's going to be good this Sunday? We'll see. We put the right work in, and again, they, they're going to have a say in it and how we. Go back and execute. Can we handle success? Those are some of the biggest challenges. Sometimes when after, after a win, I think sometimes the guys struggle to focus. That shouldn't be the case. But uh, there's always something you got to work on. How much? Obviously, you've got to know where you're supposed to be. You've got to run the route there, but it, you often say. Depends, they on have zone, depends on zone, man. What they're running. Are we hot? Are they got fire zone coverage? Is it cover two? Is it non traditional two? Is it three? Is it three cloud? I mean, there's so many factors that go into it. Right. I, so what makes a, what makes a guy a good route runner? I mean, I know it kind of varies. From well, there's some guys that are really good when you're bailing and they're running on air outside the numbers, and then there's guys that can't get off press, and so it depends on what their game plan is. So some guys are really good release guys, and they can they can win versus man. Usually, to me, that's what the really good ones can do. At some point, you got to beat man coverage. So that's a that's a whole different thing. There's some guys that look really good in seven on seven. They look really good if they're getting soft bail. But uh, to me, to be a really good receiver. To be dependable, you got to you got to find ways to beat man coverage because that's what it'll come down to a lot of times. Critical downs, which means a lot of times you have to physically get through a guy, right? I mean, you, you have get to get off the line, be able to get where you're going despite the fact that he's trying to sure. stop that. Yeah, but again, you know, there's people you use different motions sometimes, and then sometimes it's timing, and then hold, hoping you hold up in the rush. I mean, there's so many factors. It's not just always on the quarterback. The wideout sometimes you can run a good route. The quarterback had, you know. A second got the top of his drop and got hit. You know, there's there's all kind of factors, but if you, you know, assuming you protect again, what the coverage is and what you're trying to attack, and and then ultimately if they're going to play you a man, do you win your matchups? And that's what it comes down to. And that's to me the, the, the most consistent receivers year after year, the guys that can when the game's on the line, can they beat? Can they win their one on one? Can they beat man coverage? And uh, you know, the zone stuff again. Sometimes it's what they play and the spacing of it. Sure, uh, but I will say that you know the, the guys that are consistently can beat man coverage.
Well, you mentioned the turnovers on Monday, but it don't look like it's a pattern. It looks like they're all different. Yeah, I know. It's like the it's like the first drive breakdown you gave me. I just say, hey, look, I'll tell them the first drive. Hey, this is the second drive of the game. It might be my new tactic. <laughs> so, no, seriously, it's that. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah, I mean, they have been, you know, obviously that not what you want. You know, it's you know, you're overcoming a lot when you you don't win the turnover. That hasn't changed in the history of this game. To that end, I know guys are talking about like really feeling like drives could have been, those drives that the two turnovers, especially last week, could have been so different. They felt like a different momentum. But how do you see guys kind of taking ownership this week of, of changing changing kind of like winning the turnover margins for you? Yeah, it's Turnovers, it's when you get into that kind of fringe area of scoring, not not having penalties, that would help too. Keep the drives going so you don't have negative plays. And yeah, turnovers certainly um, those those crush it because those are points off the board. Whether even you know you, they, they stop you for a field goal. I mean, obviously those come away with zero points. You don't you don't get anything. So you know it's obviously getting down there, scoring, scoring touchdowns. But yeah, it starts with take care of the football and not having self-inflicted penalties or wounds or however you want to look at it. And obviously the defense has a say, but those are things you can't control. I know obviously y'all are kind of seeing where it goes with Caleb McGarry this yeah. week. Um, when it comes to a guy like Storm Norton, how did you kind of evaluate what he did on Sunday and maybe what his role could look like coming up, especially yeah. against this defensive front for Washington? Yeah, anytime you're you know the backup swing tackle, backup quarterback, I mean, those are – Really important roles on game day because you just never know, right? It takes one play, it's the first play, or hell, it could be the second last play, and you could be in a two minute drive. You got to come out there cold and, and get the job done. And uh, I thought Storm did. I mean, that's the thing. He ready to roll, went in there, and didn't feel like you had to call the game around him. You know, sometimes you feel like you got to protect certain things, and uh, I thought he did a really nice job. What does Sam Howell do? He's in the same draft, and they're. they're... They're different players, you know. Sam, uh, know a lot about Sam. Just just following him, uh, big recruit going to North Carolina. Broke a lot of records there. Vertical passer. Uh, like I said I think same thing. You can see it now in the NFL. He does. He throws throws a very accurate deep ball. Um, I think he's tough in hell, you know. And it has nothing to do. With it. Yeah, they've been sacked. I mean, they've had to come back in some games, and other games it, it's a good passing attack. But that's what you see. I mean, you see his toughness, and uh, he's resilient. He's a smart football player. You know, but they're just different players. I mean, it's like every quarterback's different. But we got a lot of respect for Sam. On Monday, you kind of gave a pass and mention to Matthew Bergeron how he's improved. Mm -hmm. um, can you just elaborate on that a little bit? How how has he? Um, where has he gotten better? Is the technique? Is the yeah, technique? I just it's like you know, the more reps he has. I mean, he said he played a lot of games in college. You move him inside. Uh, Timing changes a little bit, but he's done a good job. He's, he's uh, you know, every week you can see him getting more comfortable in there, and it's been pretty effective. Anything else? Just one thing about the collaboration between you and Terry. I mentioned how that can help that group. Do you say, listen, this group's we're great here. I can use some help on this group, and let it kind of. Uh, how does that work in terms of what your needs and wants are? I'm not going behind the scenes. We have conversations all day, every day. A lot of things we talk about. And that's what a good healthy working relationship does. And when you've got a really good staff all the way around, football staff and, you know, coaches that know how to collaborate, you know, you're, sometimes it's opportunities, other times you feel like you have a need, it just depends. And so you just don't ever shut the door on anything. And that's just keep an open mind. And that's what I appreciate. That's the same thing with the Storm edition, you know. These guys are there and they, they grind those tapes. We, we have workouts in here and we feel like, hey, look, we can get an upgrade here and uh, go at it. And you just never know when the guy goes in there and helps you win a game. But that's when you have a really good functioning staff. You're not, nobody's looking for the credit. Plenty of guys in this league that want to step in front of the parade when it works well. Oh, that was my this, my. That's never the case. There's just a group effort. There's so many things that are involved and logistics. And then ultimately, you know, obviously we're paid to make decisions. But when you've got a really competent staff, Zach, uh, it helps, and these are ongoing conversations, damn near 24-7. Oh, just one more thing. Uh, <clears throat> have you sensed that um, you all are getting a better home field advantage at the stadium? Yes, Looks but, like that's, but that's been a 
I've been in there where you can take a nap and I've been in there. Where well, that's not what you want. So obviously <laughs> that was a huge emphasis after the 21 season. Uh, we need to make that place. Those fans deserve that. And I guess all about shared experience and, and it's important to our guys and we got to continue that trend. But it's certainly made a difference. Now it's like a game of uh, that, that video game, right? When you're hitting the, those things and, you know, first year really good on the road, not so good at home. You know, we got we to gotta get both now. So... so you got any road ideas, let me know next week. <laughs> but in all seriousness, that's really important to us. Uh, the fans have been phenomenal. You could feel their energy in the fourth quarter. You talk about a momentum shift, and Robert Woods made a good play, but after we scored and that Jesse went and took that, broken that ball, I mean, you, that, that place was rocking.